Well, today I'm going to determine why I love this place so much. Or why I won't be coming back out here for a while. <sighs> Butter stuffed, crab filled, fish filet sandwich. That's the plan today. The first thing I'm going to try to do is catch a fish. Now, obviously, I'm going to be fishing for crab and fish but please give me some clarification so I know you can use one rod going for rockfish right and if you have two rods out you're not allowed to keep rockfish so does that mean I cannot have one crab rod out while fishing for rockfish catch a rockfish and keep it is that the rule or is it that I cannot have two rods out fishing for rockfish and keeping one is it just one rod per species give me some clarification for that because I want to have one crab rod out right now while I'm fishing for rockfish too I mean trying to utilize my time there's no way I'm going to catch a rockfish with a crab snare so this is what I'm using to start out for rockfish I'm using a light color because the water is a little bit murky and I'm trying to get that good visibility because these fish they fish by sight most of the time now when you're walking down here especially like right now high tide just passed it's low tide all of these rocks are so so slippery if you can try to find a rock that isn't smooth but it's instead either jagged or covered with barnacles or mussels those are the safest rocks to stay on i see a couple right down there but uh, you know i'll just stay right here for a little while lightweight oh cast and almost slipping letting it sink you want to look for the dry rocks too of course it's rocky. I like this, the feel of it. I'm going to switch this to the metal jig only because I can't cast that far. With the one ounce metal jig, I can cast at least twice as far, cover more fishing ground, try to fish this area first. If I don't get any hits, I'm going to walk down the jetty and then I can fish for crab and rockfish down in the holes. Alrighty. Metal jig out here for a few casts. I'm gonna find a non slippery spot so I can balance. Alright, that looks pretty good. Let's see what we can find. First cast. Oh, yeah, cast way farther. Actually, this looks like a pretty good seat right here. Ugh. Man, maybe I let that sink too long already. Nope, it's good. We're gonna fish this for about, ah man, 10, 15 minutes at least. Give this area good at working. A couple big waves coming, I better get the heck out of here. Now three scenarios. Let's say you came out here, you forgot your fishing license. Or scenario two, you're cheap as hell. Or scenario three, you're broke. Either way, you can come out to any jetty like this or any pier in California and fish for free as long as it's a man-made structure. Now the only thing, if you were to fish from shore, from the, the sand, that rule does not apply. You better have your fishing license. So you come out here with your family, just want to give fishing a try, do it for free on a jetty. Do it for free on a pier. Just follow the other rules and regulations for catch and rods. Well, I've made my way about halfway to the end of the jetty. You see that thing way out there? That's the fog horn. It blows a horn about every three to four, maybe five seconds. But I'm trying to spare your ears because I want to go fish out there. It's deeper out there. There's probably more fish out there, but I know it's really, really loud. So I'm going to try here, see if I can get the fish, see if I can get the crab. If I can't, well, sorry for your ears. I apologize, but I'm going to be right under that fog horn. Now I know I've mentioned this in the past, I've got these swivels for sale at fishermanslife.net but just yesterday I added ball bearing swivels and it's free shipping for orders over $50. So if you want to order some jigs, a t-shirt, a hat, maybe some more swivels, check it out fishermanslife.net, get some free shipping 
and get some high quality affordable products got my squid use a little piece there boom and got my herring I think I could squeeze this whole herring actually I might have to cut off the tail we'll use this we'll use half herring half squid all right half a herring half a squid get that good scent in there close her up so let's count them one two three four five loops on this crab snare missing one this is the crab snare that i found when i was low tide foraging crab slayer snare going out Whoa, hopefully it's sandy there it doesn't matter if we catch dungeness crab or rock crab a crab is a crab today and that's what we need Been about 10 minutes. Let's see what we got. Now when you're bringing it up here, especially when you get it close to the rocks like this, you gotta go slow, don't go crazy with it. You wanna keep, keep tension on the snare. All right, don't bounce it around too much. I got a rock crab. Oh, he came off. Dang it, man. Shoot. One rock crab missed. There's no fish out here. I'm not confident in the fishing area, so we're going to Foghorn Central now. If you think that foghorn is loud now, just wait a second. I'm still about 200, 300 feet away from it. You ever have a really, really slow day of fishing, you don't catch anything, and then you just decide it's time to catch fish? Well. That's what I've decided. It's time to catch some fish. I'm gonna check that crab snare first. My mistake last time was that I was not in a position to land the crab. So I'm gonna make my way down here. So if I have one on, I could pull him up and I won't lose him. Got one. I'm gonna bring him to the top. My rod is long enough where I can hold it out and keep tension on him. Oh man, it feels good. Oh, it's a decent rock crab. We'll get a couple of these, we'll have enough for our meal. All right, just keep tension on him, keep tension on him. It's barely hooked. It's a good one though. All right, all right man, let's go. Just two of those, and we should have enough crab. Then it's just catching a fish now. That's a good looking crab. I don't even have to measure it because I know it's more than four inches. They need to be four inches to keep when they're rock crab and you can keep 35 of these things a day. 35 a day. Definitely don't need 35 of them. I just need two more. Into the sack he goes. Let's catch some fish. See how my bait is right by my weight? I'm trying to get that bait close to the bottom as I can but it can also swing around in the water. Now the goal right now is to catch a eight to 10 inch grass rockfish, maybe a black, maybe a blue, not quite sure yet. A lot of small fish in here, but there could be some big ones mixed in the bunch. All right, nothing there. We're gonna keep moving. It's kind of like poke pulling with a fishing line. There's a fish. Oh, that might be a crab. Feels heavy, it's not fighting. Feels heavy though. Wow, look at that big rock crab, man. Oh my gosh, that was a seven inch rock crab, dude. Damn. Now you're technically, you're not supposed to keep rock crab from hook and line. So, you know, I'm gonna turn the camera off. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Damn, that was a nice one. That's what we want. Actually, that reminds me, I should go check the crabs, crab snare. So this is about the spot where that big red rock crab was. I'm just gonna put the snare down here. I'm not gonna cast it out. Hopefully he gets the scent of this, comes over and eats it. Maybe another crab will come over too. High probability of that, especially by the rock. So 926, gonna leave that here for, man, five, 10 minutes. Don't even need to leave it there that long, probably. Let's continue our fishing. Got a fish. Oh, it's a decent one too. 
Oh, he came Ooh. off. It's a decent fish, though. Right over here. Watch, watch, watch. I don't know. I don't know if it's decent, man. It's hard to say. Hard to say. Could be tiny. But there's a hole here. I, I just don't think it's fitting through the hole. Right, let's check that crab snare. It's been about six minutes. Got one. Oh yeah. Nice fat rock crab. Nice. <laughs> Same as the first one. Big claws on her. Heck yeah. I always call him a her, but it's a him. That's one. Damn, I was hoping for that big red one. But this will do. I just need one more crab. And I'm good to go, man. Look at that thing. That's a beast. That's a beast. Ooh, he's trying to grab me. He's trying to grab me. Oh, man. So look how big his claws are. But look how small his body is. So we should measure this one. This one needs to be four inches long. Yep, and he's over four and a half. So... He is a keeper. Into the bag he goes. Fish on. Fish on, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we're looking for today. No, it's not at all. This is way too small. If we could get one 10 times the size, that would be good. And they're out here. There are some 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 rockfish out here like that, but this guy is way too small. Pretty cool though. Any crab here? Yep. Ooh, nice one. Feels like a red rock crab, maybe. Oh no, two of them. Oh, I got that big red rock crab. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Let's go, man. Oh, this top one's not even hooked, so let me hold on to him before he comes off. Look, he's just holding on to it. He's not even snared at all, this top one here. But bro, look at this big red rock crab. That's the one that we hooked earlier. And now he's snared, so it's a legal keep. Check it out, check it out. Oh. Well, that big one almost came off. Not too worried about that one, because man, this big red rock crab, that's enough meat. Woo, look at that thing, man. Heck yeah. Wow, that thing is huge. Bro, I'm almost positive that this was the one that we hooked earlier. I'm lucky I brought that crab snare over. Look at that thing. That is a beast of a rock crab. Look at that. And we got another one too. We got two. But that one on my right hand, that thing is huge. Look at that. We got enough meat. Now we need some fish. We need a decent sized fish so we can get a good filet and put these guys in the bag. Heck yeah, man, all males too. Looking good, baby. We're done crabbing. Into the bag she goes. Look at that thing, gosh. Now I got the crab I need to make this dish and I'm thinking I'm only gonna catch small fish on that side. I know there's a chance to get some bigger ones, but not that likely. So I'm gonna cast out here to the ocean side and hope I get something over here. Baiting and waiting. You know what? I think there's just too much current over here. I'm gonna walk to the end of the jetty. This foghorn is right in front of me. I know it's loud. Now, I don't like to use this phrase very often, but please bear with me for a little bit while I catch a fish. Once I do, I'll get the heck away from this thing. The reason why I don't like to use that phrase, what does that even mean? Bear with me. Where did that even come from? Please bear with me. Does that mean like two bears are hibernating and they're spending a lot of time together? Uh, in the winter, they don't want to, so please bear with me. Is that where it comes from? Please bear with me. You know, it just occurred to me uh, earlier today when I came out here, I was gonna bring two rods, two rock fishing rods. And now it just occurred to me that I have my crab snaring rod. It's kind of just like going out in the ocean with two motors. You got your main one and your kicker. If your main one dies, obviously you don't want to use your kicker, but at least you got something. So there's no need to bring a second rock fishing rod. I got the crabbing rod for a second rod if I need it. Can you guys see where it's murky water here and it turns super clear? 
that's where I'm trying to cast into, right at the edge, kind of into the clear water, and I'm hoping that there's still some rocks underneath. Yo, there's these two kayakers out there. One of them just flipped. One of them just flipped right now. But it looks like he's okay. I'm ready to call 911 right now. Yeah, I'm gonna call right now. One guy flipped, that's no, that's no, uh, that's scary, man. Okay, it looks like, okay, they, he righted him. Man, that's crazy, dude. I was just calling Pillar Point Harbor and they said call 911 in case there's an emergency, but his friend flipped him over. They're on some super, super narrow kayaks. I'll film them when they come back in. Just take a look. Dangerous out here. I got a fish and it feels like a good one. Feels like a big cabazon or something. What is it, dude? What is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, it's a crab, man. A big ass crab. Damn. Wow, look at that thing. Dang, I was in the right spot. I felt a little nibble out there in that rough water. That big crab, look at this. Look at that crab, man. But we don't want him. We got our crab already. I'm gonna keep trying. There's gotta be some fish out here. There goes the harbor patrol. And I bet you that they're going out for these guys. Oh no, maybe not. But lucky, man. Those are the two kayakers. Scary out here. It can be rough. It's, it, it is rough. I mean, look at it. It doesn't look that bad, but it is choppy as heck. Gotta be safe. Luckily, they had the buddy with them. Now there they go, safe and sound. Only they know how close they came to death today. Oh, big fish, big fish, big fish on, big fish on. He's in a hole though. Oh man, he's a big fish. Oh, get out of here. Oh, it's big, dude. What is this thing? It's big. It's an eel or it's a lingcod or something huge. It's huge. Oh, what is it? Oh, what is it? What is it? Oh, what is this thing? Oh my gosh, that's a world record eel, dude. Holy moly. Look at that. Jeez, that's an eel. That's a huge eel. Look at that thing. Look at that. That's crazy. Look at that eel, man. What the hell? Bro. That's insane. All right, I gotta get him in the bag or something quick. Or else he's gonna squirm out for sure. Yo, what in the heck have you ever in your life seen an eel this big? Look at this thing. You know what? I mean, I wanted to do a catch and cook, but oh my gosh, this thing is so big. It's rolling around. Dude, calm down, man. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Oh my gosh. All right, look, I'm gonna lay him on his side. I wanna get a measure of him. I wanna see how long he is, just for my own record. So, let's see, zero. 26 inches. 26 inches long, that's insane. A 26 inch long eel. Let me weigh him if he'll stay still. I don't know if he will stay still or not, but didn't even know they got this big. Oh man, I don't think I'm gonna be able to weigh him. I mean, this is not even a wolf eel. This is a monkey face prickleback eel. This is insane. Stay still, dude. Stay still, man. I'm trying to do you right, bro. Oh my God, he's got teeth too. I don't want to get chomped on. I don't have any pliers with me. Gosh, I mean, I wanted to do a catch and cook, but is it worth me doing a catch and cook video just to kill this old, old, old eel? I mean, I don't think so. I think I'm gonna release him. I want to get a weight on him. 4 point, 4 point 10 pounds, 4.9 pounds on this huge eel. All right, I'm gonna cut the line. That is by far the biggest eel I've ever caught.
I really think it's the right thing to do to let him go. I think it's huge. I wouldn't let him go. I just put him in the water right there. Let him regain his, his, his energy. There he is right there still. He'll be good, you know, once he gets back into the water. I mean, this thing is just gigantic. I can't, I can't, I can't kill him. There he goes. Oh my gosh. You know, I'm not just out here catching and killing everything I see. If it's a big, big, big fish like that, which you rarely ever see in your lifetime, is it really worth it to kill it for one meal? Maybe two meals? You kill it, you eat, it's gone forever. Whereas if you let it go, it can make so many babies and it just prolongs the life of this species even longer. And for me to kill it, just to eat something for one day, it's not worth it for me. I'd rather keep something a lot smaller. That thing has been here its entire life. It's probably, probably 20 years old. Who knows? Probably 30, 40, I don't know. Probably older than me. That was insane. Wow. Wow. I've never seen an eel that big before. We're gonna go back down the same hole. And that's another eel probably. No, rockfish. Hey. All right, well they're out here. That's what I was looking for, a grassy. Too small or what? What do you think? I don't even think that's too small. I'm gonna keep this one, look at that. It is honestly kind of small. But there's enough meat where I can do what I want and it's gonna fit in my pan. So I am going to keep this one. If I can catch one more bigger, then I'll use that as a demonstration. And then I'll just fry this one up at home. But this should be perfect for a demonstration of what I wanna do. And you guys can do it at home too. I feel a lot better keeping one of these than that old, old eel. But I don't know, is that right? Do I, is there a reason why I should feel better keeping this than that big old eel? I don't know, whatever it is, that eel got lucky today. Well, it's 120. If I don't catch anything by two bigger, then we're gonna demonstrate how to do that. Well, I'm gonna demonstrate how to do that with that fish I just caught. But if I can poke my way down to a deep hole like I just did, I don't see why I shouldn't get another rockfish. Fish right there. Let's let him eat it for a second. Oh, he's on it, he's on it, he's on it. Ah. Get out of there and don't break, please. Rockfish or what? Another big eel? <laughs> Whatever it is, it's big, man. Man, when you come out here to the deeper water, you get fish. He's on it. Come on out of here. Get out of there. Get out of there. Oh, man, he might break my line. Oh, gosh. He's in a hole. It's probably another big eel. There he is. Oh, he came off. All right, he's right down here. It's probably an eel. Yep, here he comes, here he comes. Big one, another big one. Another big eel, I think. Oh my gosh, oh, I broke the line. Damn, y'all, that was a big one. That was another big eel. Oh my gosh, broke the line. Well, just like I promised, I've moved away. Thank you for bearing with me. I've moved away from the foghorn a little bit. I know you can still hear it. Time to prep those crabs. First thing I'm gonna do, get some water steaming, maybe boiling, and then put it on the fire. And then I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with the crabs, just one second. Just gonna grab a little bit of this ocean water. Boom, yep, right there. Just a little bit, we don't need too much. And I'm gonna put it on the burner. Not that stable, but that's all right. All right, that's gonna heat. And I've got those crabs. I've got four, five crabs, I think. Let's see how many we got. We got four. We got four. They're still alive and kicking. Now you see this crab here? It's a good size one. But what I'm gonna do, since the fish I have is small, I'm gonna rip one claw off of each crab. Now you may think that's cruel, but what's more cruel? killing the crab or taking one claw? Easy answer. And this one, his claw is barely even functional. <sighs> All right, one crab, claw, off. Crab, back in the water. Now one of these claws and the other one is more than enough to fill that, 
that fish up. So I'm gonna rip off one of these claws. All right, now we got the claw. He will grow that back. One claw red crab, back in the water. This is kind of just a demonstration. You can do this with a whole crab if you want. You could do this with a huge filet. This would be delicious, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I just thought of it the other day, but I'm sure it would. Now we got two more. Here's another crab. We don't need her. Actually, we don't need him, I should say. Still alive, kicking. We don't need him either. Their lucky day. Now we have this little rockfish here. I'm gonna scale it, fillet it, and get the meat off. Very simple process. You could do this with a spoon, you could do this with a knife. Water is boiling. Let's put our crab legs in. And those will kind of just steam right there like that. Now if you were ever looking for a high-end quality gift, I don't think you can go wrong with the knife from Adrian Etheridge. That's the homie from the UK. He sent me this not too long ago. I actually bought this and it's just super sharp. It's a super sharp paring knife. A little bit pricey, but they last forever. And I would highly recommend this as a gift for anyone you love or yourself. Now let's get this fish cut up. So we're gonna try to get, keep as much meat as we can. Meat looks great. Cut right there, cut along the spine. It is imperative that I get every piece of meat because this fish is so small, so I'm taking my time with it. Now, ideally, you would do this with a bigger piece of meat, but that's enough to try it out. I've never tried this recipe before, so this is all the point of today, just trying this out. So my plan is to take this skewer and take this cotton twine, thread, rope, whatever you want to call it, and then thread and sew it all around. Stuff it with butter. Once that crab is done, stuff it with crab, have some avocado on the side, and have a little fish sandwich just like that. So let's do that first. We're gonna poke a hole through the skin because the skin will keep it all together. Take a look at that. We got our two fillets stitched together, completely stitched together. When I pull it tight, it's not going out, not going away. Now I did this the, the hardest way you could possibly do. I mean, look at the thickness of this rope. This is rope, this is not thread. So if I actually had a thread and needle, I could just stitch it back and forth through the skin 50 times if I wanted to. I only did it about six times because it was so hard to get it through the skin. But this is the idea. I'm about to cook it now and I'm still glad I didn't keep that eel. This is just the prototype. The prototype stitched fish. Crab is done. I'm gonna crack it, stuff this with some butter, fry it in the pan on low heat, Wow, it's going to be delicious. Now let's crack these things. All right, man, look at that. Perfect. Cracked. Let's crack it again. Oh, yeah. Dang, y'all. Dang, y'all. Look at that leg. Oh, man. Look at the meat in here, y'all. That's the red rock crab. And that's that whatever rock crab thick one. Let me try this red rock crab just a little bit. Damn, that is delicious. Mm. Let's try that other rock crab. Mm. That's delicious too. This got a stronger flavor. This is more subtle. This is really good. This red rock crab, I'm glad he came out of that hole and got on the snare. Now, let's stuff the fish. Of course, we got our butter, so I'm gonna cut off about three slices. All right, those are going inside the fish. One, two, three. Now I'm gonna do one more thread to the top, and then I'm gonna tie it tight, tie it shut. Tie this thing closed. Now remember y'all, this is just the prototype, okay? This is not the final version, all right? This is the first time that this has ever been done. Okay, I already know what I would do differently next time. Next time, I would use thinner thread and I would score the fish's skin and also take the pin bones out. That way when it splits, it'll split on the scores and on the edges, it'll still stay together, in theory. 
this side stay together. I wonder why the other one broke. All right, let's see how this turned out. This is cool enough to finally eat. Got the crab inside, cooked fully, only butter, no seasoning. Let's take a bite. Dang, I got some avocado on the side. I'm gonna have that with this. Ooh, that's delicious with the crab too. I'll be out tomorrow kayak fishing with Nick Fish. Thinking about getting another kayak for myself. Think it's a good idea? I think so. I'm gonna finish this up. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in a couple days.